Hello everyone, welcome to 2020. I've just been for a swim, hence having wet hair. <laughs> this is so annoying. I should have left that on, shouldn't I? It is Saturday the 25th of January and it is half eight at night. I could be out on the town with the kids, but instead I am having a cheeky G&T let me turn it around so I don't get that in my eye. Cheers. I have lip gloss on. I don't know how I feel about lip gloss. I feel like I like the look of lip gloss, but then it like... Oh, 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 oh. You may or may have not have noticed, this is the first official video on Lose It Like Lauren for 2020. So it may be the 20 something, even though I've just said it and forgotten already. Go give me a thumbs up. If you are not subscribed, subscribe. If you have not got the bell clicked, click the bell and then you'll get notifications every time I upload. Oh my God, shut up. Now, I did end up screenshotting all the questions because um, I didn't want them to disappear. So we have a lot because I'm famous. First question, numero uno. Let's start with the obvious. Um, Robin.carry says, how are you doing? So I am doing well. This year has been a roller coaster of a ride. So it's now what the 25th. I on the 7th of January, I was involved in a car accident. I was driving. Um I can't really talk about it because it still makes me feel really weird. Um the fact that nobody was hurt is a freaking miracle. Touch wood. My car did not survive. My car passed away. So uh, the car I had was written off years ago uh, by someone else when I first got him. Uh, him, when I first got the car. Got the car in the July, uh, in the April, and then the July, someone rear-ended me. I think, if you know that video, I was in the, the th thumbnail's like this, and it says I was in a car crash. I might use that picture again for this one. That was the first writing off of the car. And now my car was 14 years old, so it wasn't gonna survive another write off, even though it could have been fairly easily rep uh, repaired. There we go, thank you, Lauren. But it just wasn't, it wouldn't have been, been insurable. So gutted, absolutely gutted. Obviously nothing can take away the fact that nobody was hurt. So there's that. One of my best friends said, um, you know, your car did its job. For those of you, so many of you have messaged me saying that you're, you've you been in car accidents as well and luckily nothing has happened. Um, and that's what cars are there for, they're there to protect us and mine did. So it was heartbreaking and then I had to go and collect all the stuff the next day. For those of you who have also asked, Leonard is fine. He's up there, there. He's just having a rest. I was incredibly lucky to get a new car. So, not new, the new, well, new for me. Uh, my new baby is white, a little Ford Fiesta. Gorgeous, in love, absolutely in love. Feel like a baller, like as if I could be any more obnoxious, it's happened. I'm all for it. As much as I'm joking, it, I was really dazed for about four or five days. I am just really, grateful to not be hurt because it could have been really bad. Did I say a bus went into me? I don't think I did. Yeah, a bus went into me and then I went into a parked car. The, bu the bus pushed me into a car. So yeah, let's not talk about it. Raving Witch 1313 has asked two questions. She said, how are you loving your life right now? How am I loving, how, that's a great question. How am I loving my life right now? I'm loving my life because I live alone and I don't have any responsibilities apart from my jobs and my own personal care and my friendships that I have to keep up, unfortunately. And that's pretty much it. So I run my own schedule. I don't have any mouths to feed apart from this one, which is always hungry. And I just love that. I'm loving getting to know myself again and realizing that I'm amazing and that I'm unstoppable and this year is gonna, is gonna go off. So I suppose that is what I'm loving about life right now. She also asked, what does your self-care look like? For instance, right now, this is my self-care. It's Saturday night, as I said, I could be going out, but I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna film a video, have some pasta. I got some, I went to M&S, and M&S, I, I know, end of January, and I'm treating myself to M&S. Who do I think I am? I don't know. You know, they do like those uh, three little tapas things for seven pounds. I got 
a prawn one, a cheesy tomato one with like sun dried tomatoes and a prawn one. No, and a calamari one. And I'm gonna like mix them in with pasta and live my best life. That tonight is my self care. I moved my body earlier. I haven't been to the gym in like two weeks. So to go for a swim and to feel my body and I felt strong in the water today, which was unusual because I thought I was gonna be like a floundering mess, like crying and being glad that you couldn't see it in the, t in the water, but I survived. Self care is also, yeah, setting aside time for myself, taking extra long showers, other ways of self care. Okay, today I'm like waxing lyrical, great phrase, about the fact that I've been for a swim, but I didn't actually get out of bed till 6 p.m. so I didn't wake up till midday and then I didn't get up till 6 so that was brilliant. I made some microwave popcorn and I sat and ate it in bed and it was magnificent so I've had just the best day. <laughs> just had the best day. Doing my own thing is brilliant. Mm -mm -mm. Luz Loves Love says tell us a romantic moment you've lived. Preferably not sexual just dreamy okay. Not sexual just dreamy. My ex-boyfriend got one of my favourite singers to write me a song. Uh, if you are English and you know like indie rock, there's a band called In Me and the lead singer is called Dave McPherson. My ex got him to write me a song and it was amazing and I cried so much and it was great and yeah. I think that was very romantic. I think that was a Valentine's Day. Yeah, many years ago. Crystal.nico says, how was your holiday? I'm assuming you mean Christmas. So Christmas, it feels like so long ago now, doesn't it? But it was great, it was really nice. I got ill, that was another thing. I got ill on Christmas day. So luckily I just made it through the Christmas meal. Uh, and about half an hour later, I felt that tingle, you know, like, like sore throat. And then my ears started like popping. And then I started getting really anxious because we had my brother's baby there and my grandma who's 92. And I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna infect my, the baby and my grandma. And I started really panicking. Uh, and then I was ill until the 3rd of January, 4th of January. Um, so that was a long ass cold I had. And then got, just got out of it and smash, so great time. So many questions about dating. Uh, DKL1979, are you dating at current Lauren? Yes, I am. Geraldine underscore Edson says, how do I keep myself motivated to lose weight? I still feel so guilty for eating. We have been brainwashed into thinking that eating is wrong and listening to our hunger, that, that listening to our hunger is wrong. Our bodies are so intelligent. We have been taught by diet culture to ignore the signals that they give us to survive. If we are hungry, they tell us to eat. If we are satisfied, this is something that it takes a little bit more getting used to. If we are satisfied, our bodies will tell us to stop eating. This is the whole like Paul McKenna mindset, the intuitive eating mindset. Start when you're hungry, stop when you're satisfied, and your body has a set point weight. So if you start eating intuitively, your body will naturally go to the set point weight that it knows you should be. Um, there's an amazing book called Health at Every Size. I've got it over there, but I'm too lazy to lean. Um, Health at Every Size by Linda Bacon. Mm, Bacon. And I would suggest you read it because it will change your mind, change your life. It's just more about eating intuitively, moving your body, but not expecting life-changing weight loss that we're all brainwashed into thinking that we need to have in our life for happiness. Joanna underscore S-Y-P-K-A says, what are their names, the giraffes and the pig? So the pig, this is my new money box. It's got about three pennies in it. And this pig is called Piggly Wig, named by my best friend Lauren. Then we have two giraffes here. One, well, little ones over there, and then this one. I haven't yet named this giraffe yet, but they're like mummy and baby. If you have a name for the giraffe, please comment below. Memento Mori Adam, also known as a life less boring. If you are a OG weight loss, weight loss community person, Adam is an absolute legend. And the fact that he asked me a question on here just blows my mind because I love him and I wish we lived closer. He says, other than being snarky with me, <laughs> is there anything you miss about the old weight loss community? Um, I miss the community that ha it, it had, but equally, looking back, it was a lot of, for me, disordered eating habits, so I don't miss that. We used to have a chat room, a weight loss chat room, that had um, webcams on Stick'em, and it used to like go off 
in the nights that like, we used to be gossiping there used to be like drama it used to be absolute carnage at times but it was really annoying because everyone in it was in america so i'd end up staying up through the night and i remember once my dad got up for work in the morning at six and i was still up and he went mental at me because like, i was bad for your mental health he was completely right like i shouldn't have been staying up all night it's just it was so um addictive to stay up and talk to everyone and just be like friends um is there anything i miss about all weightlessness community i wish how young I, I miss how young i was and how much of my life i had ahead of me and now if i could go back to that age i'd easily do it with the knowledge obviously and there are definitely a few people i'd punch in the face <laughs> Heather.Monez underscore paints says, are you dating someone special yet? Are you ever going to tell us what happened? I am dating. That's all I'm going to say. And uh, no, I'm never going to tell you what happened because I think I said enough in my other Q&A. Yeah, I've had quite a few messages recently. I think three this week being like, uh, did I miss something? Are you single? What happened? And it just kind of blows my mind that people would just message that. I know that I put my life out there and people care and it probably doesn't come across as as intrusive as it feels it's just if somebody yeah it just is a bit odd sorry i didn't even know why i mentioned that <laughs> little son little son momo says what have been your biggest mental hurdles that you're dealing with going through starting 2020 i think just getting back to it i was so in involved with my uh, uh, swimming routine and getting back to it before Christmas. Then I got ill over Christmas and then the crash and I feel like I need to get myself back into it again. I just feel a bit tired by that, I suppose. I wanna start planning my year more. I'm gonna answer that more with another question. I wanna start planning my year more, but at the moment I'm feeling pretty good. I'm feeling a solid nine, I'd say out of 10, which for a January isn't half bad. Does your mom still have the purple sweater? Of course she does, of course. But it's more of like a light jumper, she says, so it's not really um, winter, winter clobber. That's such an English word, isn't it, clobber? Like, clothes. Jumpy Kick Jump says, would you rather live in a castle or a rocket ship? Oh, probably a castle. I mean, I feel like I need more details because a castle would just be incredible, but it could be quite lonely. But a rocket ship, you'd need to have, it would be such a rigmarole to get it launched. Would it be able to go into the air? Is it working? Is there, would I have enough money for fuel and take off? But then I think I'd be quite lonely up in a rocket ship and I'd have to eat that food out of dry packets and I wouldn't be able to eat fresh cheese. So no, castle it is. Castle it is. B3LLZY key, <laughs> key, that doesn't even make sense. b 4 ll zy Keto says, not a question, just wanted to say I started watching you 10 years ago and adore you well firstly thank you for still being here you deserve a medal welcome to this year and more stupid videos uh this one is from anonymous it says best advice for a young person struggling with body image i think this would be my advice to anyone struggling with body image work out what you're looking at every day whether it's instagram whether it's facebook whether it's magazines whether it's tv and work out how that's making you feel. For instance, are the people that you're following you following on Instagram making you feel good or are they making you feel comparison? Are they making you feel sad? Are they making you feel like you want to be somebody else? Have a look at that firstly. And if anything is making you feel anything other than good, get rid of it. Then start following people with all different body types. And get this book. Body Positive Power by Megan Jane Crabb. She is um, Body Posy Panda on Instagram, and this book will change you. It says, if you've ever been tired of being at war with your body, then this is the life-changing answer that you've been looking for. How to stop dieting, make peace with your body, and live. Uh, if you're tired of being war at war with your body, then this is the life-changing answer you've been looking for. Honestly, this book is wonderful. I've, got, I've listened to the audio version first, and then I just got this one. And it's so good, so, so good. Everyone should go get this book. And I think a massive tip as well is to know that you are not the problem. It's society, it's diet culture, it's everything telling you that your body isn't right. And your body is beautiful, your body deserves love, as do you. And your body is an 
instrument here to keep you alive it's not something to be judged it's something to you know keep you breathing keep you moving keep you functioning as well as it it, it can itself so just know that you are not the problem you are worthy you are loved and you are also able to get over anything that life throws at you because i know that when you're feeling like that that it feels like you're never going to get out of it and how can you ever love what the society has told you not to love you know like whatever it may be whatever it may be you are deserving of love sky underscore tattoo says what is your favorite thing to have on bread great question sky mine's avocado and chili flakes for the win Ooh. I mean avocado and chili yes love that cheese on toast cream cheese and cherry tomatoes my mouth watering obviously bacon sandwich probably cheese I'd say cheese and bread cheese or avocado avocado fried egg and mozzarella all melted into it so it's like l.maison underscore says what's your favorite plant at the moment my favorite plant is probably one my friend Sada Kane got me. Hello, pretty. And I love it because it's grown so much since I've had it. And they're all like fighting to be the tallest one. This one's currently winning. Well, apart from this one. This one was always bigger. But it's so pretty. <laughs> Danny Mac says, are you looking for love? At the moment, I'm enjoying my life. And I'm enjoying feeling like me again after the last couple of years and i'm enjoying just enjoying being me let's say let's say that and i'm enjoying dating so what what will be will be hey sarah sarah who knows what's around the corner jewy1820 says why are you so bloody amazeballs i don't know just just struck lucky didn't i lucky becky says what's your main goal for 2020 i have been so anti-resolutions this year that i haven't actually set myself any goals for the year and i feel like that's an i feel like that's an error because i need some sort of goals to focus on um i want to one thing i want to do is to use more of my time off my phone sorry battery died be more creative be more adventurous go out in the nature <coughs> in the nature go out to nature more and just escape london a bit more i'd like to do in terms of like career i really want to start launching youtube off again i know i say this all the time i know i never do it somebody messaged me actually last week they were like why have you never like properly done youtube <laughs> you've got you've got so much potential and you're wasting it and i was like as much as this is really harsh it's also very true so um i definitely want to put more into youtube this year and um, yeah, I feel like I'm achieving with my year. Blue Ella Joe says, is YouTube your only job? Uh, I only started following you last year. Love your posit positivity about life. Hello, welcome. YouTube is not my only job because I make about 50 pounds from it per month. So no, it is not my only job. I do this all for fun. And you guys, uh, I work for the family business. I work with my mum. I am the, at the moment, I'm like the video photo editor. So I'm a video editor for my mum. She has a business in Cyprus where she rents villas for holidays. So we go out there about once a year, take all the footage, and then, yeah, it's amazing. We get on well. She's looking to retire this year, so um, I'm going to hopefully take over the business. That's another thing that's going to be happening this year. Scary, scary. I still can't believe it's 2020. Still feels like it was the millennium about five minutes ago. La Blondiki. Blondiki. Blondiki? Says, what's your spirit animal? Definitely a cat. Loves to sleep. Loves to eat. Loves the sun. Loves to snuggle. Can be a bitch. But loves to be stroked. Spot on. The Fit Auntie says, are you happy? I am asking genuinely. I am happy. I'm very happy. I always get people saying, when I answer this question and say I'm happy, they always say, no, I, I, I can see the sadness in your eyes. <laughs> it's like, can you see the sadness in my eyes? I think I responded to someone like last week and I was like, uh, doesn't everyone have sadness in their eyes? I'm sure you could see anything. And anyway, when somebody looks at somebody else, they only see a reflection of what they want to see or a reflection of themselves, not, not what is actually there. Hey. so yeah i am happy i'm very happy i'm happy to be alive i feel like i've got a new like burst of life that didn't make sense uh what's the worst thing you've ever done well that just went in, that just went in didn't it what's the worst thing you've ever done i honestly can't think of anything 
which I'm surprised about because I feel like there's something. Oh, <laughs> um, I feel like people's perception of bad is different. So like I could say something and some people will be like, well, that's not bad. But then I could say the same thing and somebody else might be like, you're an awful person. Started a series on Netflix um, and then pretended I hadn't when I watched it with somebody because they were waiting to watch it with me. I mean, that's the lamest answer I've ever given in my life. I think the worst thing I've ever done is answering that question with a lie, so there we go. <laughs> Do you get lonely living on your own in your beautiful little apartment, says AMG711. No, it's it's because it's quite small. I don't rattle around in it. I get lonely, I get sad if it's messy. Like, at the moment, it's all right, it's okay today. But like, if it's messy and it's getting me down, it gets messy so fast because it's so small. The kitchen in a cupboard feels like it's like a washing up monstrosity every day. And that's just ridiculous. I don't know how I managed to get through so much cutlery. It's because I work from home, that's why. But no, I don't get lonely. I'm lucky enough to have a lot of friends and an active social life. So if anything, I don't spend enough time here on my own. So I wish I got lonely, but because I'm always either out or doing something, I don't really have the time, which is, which is something I also want to change this year. I want to spend more time on my own. Claire Claire 85 says, why don't you have a TV? <laughs> Love ya, just being a curious George. I don't have a TV just for the plain reason that when my friends say, did you watch last night? I can say, no, I don't have a TV. And if you are one of my best friends, you will know how infuriating that is. And you will know how much you hate me as a person and a friend. So that's why I don't have a TV. And also, I don't really mind watching stuff on my laptop. If I sit on my sofa, I put my laptop like up on a little chest of drawers. So it kind of is like here. And I don't really have room for a TV. I like the fact that my room kind of like focuses on this area here. And I don't really want to clutter that with a big screen. So yeah. Do you still catch up with your YouTube friends, e.g. X Media X? Um, her and I fell out last year. Not gonna talk about it, because you guys never wanna know, so not gonna talk about it. Um, I'm listening to this podcast at the moment called Just Break Up. It's brilliant, they talk about so many things. It's these two friends from uh, Minnesota, and they're just gorgeous. They're just absolutely brilliant, love them. And they say a phrase that is, not all people are for us. That can be relationships, that can be friends, that can be in a work environment, that can be absolutely everything. Not all people are for us. And just because, you know, there's the pressure that, you know, every relationship you have has to work and you know, every single friendship you have, and especially with friendships, there isn't so much of a awareness that sometimes friendships aren't positive or aren't working. And that's fine. Just acknowledge it, handle it and move on. Simple as that. I do still catch up with uh, My Pale Skin blog for her two nights ago. Still catch up with Wondergasm. Levi, need to see him soon. And I can't think of anyone else now. And yeah, Joel Wood, obviously. Terry Mack says, would you ever meet up with a follower who was on vacation in London? Yeah, why not? Go on then. <laughs> Let's have a coffee. MN Northy says, can you tell us more about your- NM Northy says, can you tell us more about your body positive journey? I am gonna do a video about that soon. So check that out soon when it's up. Haven't made it yet. Um, cause I feel like that's much more of, I'll tell you what, I'll give you a snippet now. I've kind of like really hated my body and always felt like it's a work in progress for my whole life. At the moment, I'm happy with where I am. I feel comfortable in my body. I feel comfortable in the size that I am, even though I'm still feeling a bit, oh, I think that's just natural. I'm kind of like treating it with respect for where it is now and I'm moving it in a gentle way. I'm listening to my mind. I'm being like, right, does this feel good? Does this not feel good? Does, you know, um, is do I want to work out loads today or do I just want to do a bit? Have I done enough? All these things. Um, and I'm being a lot more respectful to myself rather than just being all, oh, I'm not where I want to be or oh, I've put on weight and da, da 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 because that's never gonna benefit you. You can't be positive with a negative mindset. So I'm just trying to be a lot more loving, gay. Sorry, I got to, I always get told off when I say that, but <clears throat> sorry. Favorite childhood memory? When we used to go to uh, one of the Canary Islands. Hello, Jesse who lives in one of them, I want to say Tenerife. And we went to Fuerteventura and we used to like run and jump down the sand dunes and that's a massively, you know, such a love-filled memory. Hector.Tenant says, would you consider getting a pet? I would, but I just don't have enough room. I don't want anything in a cage 
even though I would love a little bunny, I would love a little rabbit, but I just, I just don't have much ventilation in here and I just feel like it would either chew all the cables because the rabbits love to chew cables. It just would just, yeah, I just don't have the room for it. I just don't have the room for anything. But I, I will get some, I want to get a cat when I move into my next place. Definitely get a little kitten or a bunny or both. Our journalist says, where is your dream place to live? Dream job. Dream job would probably be YouTube full time. Slash being a life coach, maybe. Who knows? Because I can get my own shit together. So, you know, deserve to give other people advice. And dream place to live. Be by the sea, I'd say. But I'd want to live, move all my family there as well. Like, the re I really want to move to Brighton. But my niece is three and a half months old. And... I would really miss out on her growing up because at the moment I see her like every week and it would be heartbreaking for me to like not see her and give her cuddles so yeah if she annoys me then I'll move away but at the moment unfortunately she's just the best thing ever. Caroline Beth Barnes says how much do you spend monthly on food? I mean how long's a piece of string? <laughs> uh, too much would probably be my answer. I need to start meal prepping. I need to start arranging my food better, buying more consciously, because um, it feels like I'm forever buying. F Actually, no, it doesn't. That's that's not for that, that that's not false. That's not true. But I just feel like I'm always. It's it's, it's the whole thing of living for one, living, <laughs> living for one, eating for one, cooking for one. I bought a slow cooker this week and I made a chilli and that was delicious so I'm going to be doing more things like that and hopefully that's going to keep my food bill down if I can make like veggie chilies and other things if you have any good slow cooker recipes comment below or send me a dm on instagram please because I'm all about that slow cooker life right now uh thanks so much in advance peanut butter underscore and underscore smiles says what's something about you we don't know and wouldn't guess I've always wanted to play the ukulele now, I tried to buy one a couple of days ago on Spock, which is like Gumtree, and I messaged the woman and I was like, uh, she wanted 30 quid for it, and I was like, I'll give you 20. And then she took like six hours to respond, and then was like, oh, it went five minutes ago. So, my ukulele dreams have been slashed with a, with a knife. <laughs> with a knife! Too far, as always. I mean, who needs one? I could just do this. But I feel like it would be so cute, and I can't sing, but I just feel like... That could be like a video, me, me learning how to play the ukulele. R-S-K-E-Z underscore 78 says, Hi Lauren, what is your go-to music to lift your spirits? And what song gets you to the dance floor? I have a playlist called Let's Go, uh, and that kind of like gets me moving. I'll put the, um, I'll put the link down below so you can have a listen if you fancy. What song gets me to the dance floor? Probably anything by Burner Boy at the moment. Something sexy will get me to the dance floor. Jenny Girl 1206 says, have you ever been in a long distance relationship and how did you make it work? I live in Pennsylvania and my boyfriend lives in Houghton. Houghton the Spring. That sounds very posh, I've never heard of it. Um, with the five hour time difference, it's really hard. I did a long distance relationship for, I've done a couple. I did one for nearly two years, um, but it didn't work out purely because of the people that we were. It didn't work out because there weren't any issues. It was just, there was a lot of um, unprocessed anger on my side because of him so therefore that's why it didn't work i would say that it all depends on the type of people you are for instance i would not want to do one again because i personally feel like i need the physical touch as much as you can skype nowadays and facetime it's amazing i would need someone to cuddle and to be there because i'm needy i would just do everything in my power to be closer to that person to make it work i just say you know, keep up the Skypes, like pl plan. Uh, my friend I always see, uh, Beth, uh, is in a long distance relationship with Brian, who lives over in the States, and they always have a time when they're gonna see each other next. They're obviously working so hard and saving money so hard that they get to plan when they're gonna see each other. So I think that knowing when you're gonna see each other next makes the distance easier, because you know when you're going to see that person again and get to hold them and whatever. So, um, not I am not an expert by any means, but I would just say good luck, keep it up, communication, and um, yeah, love will conquer. 
are your favourite snacks or junk food? At the moment, I've been loving, sorry if she knows, you know the uh, sorted popcorn that you can put in the microwave and it like pops itself? Yum! I ate a whole bag of, hey, oh, uh, I ate a whole bag earlier because YOLO. My freaking phone died. So, Karen underscore M underscore Skinner says, have you ever taken any medications for your mental health difficulties? If so, did you find it helpful? Love, Karen. Um, I, back in the day, maybe about 10 years ago, I was offered antidepressants. And um, because of the history of depression in my family, I knew that I could, I could change certain things in my life uh, that were in my control. And I said to myself, I'm going to do these changes and if I still feel like I need them, because I remember going to the doctors and they were like pretty much giving them to me and I was like, no, I'm not going to take them. I'm going to see if these changes make me feel better. And if they don't, I'll come back and I'll get them. But the changes did make me feel better. So I didn't end up taking them. But no, I've never taken anything. I try and take multivitamins every so often, but it's not the same, is it? Um, no, I've been, I've been lucky enough not to need to take anything. Georgie's Getting Good says, have you got any plans to get back into drawing painting again? Yes, I have. I actually bought a massive canvas over there. It's like A3 size and I want to do a painting and put it above my bed. Or just like, I'm thinking of drawing like loads of boobs, like loads of different shaped boobs. I know I've seen like Urban Outfitters do a, do a picture like that, but I just want to like make my own because some of these prints, they charge so much for it and it's just so easy to do. So I need to go get a big bit of paper from like Hobby Crafts or somewhere like that. And then I'm gonna create my own load of boobs because boobies are one of the best things in the world. Mm -mm. Danny's speaking diabetes says, what do you look for in someone physically and personality? Physically, as tall as me or taller, personality they've got to be able to like deal with my level of weird and possibly give it back in their own way uh, keep up with my unstoppable humor and um be kind in terms of looks I'm probably a teeth fan not really got any preference on you know skin color or anything else um i'm a bum girl well it depends on a on a woman i'm probably a bum girl but on a man, not that I've been interested in men in a long time, but on a man, probably shoulders and back. Prima Pins Charina says, are you in a relationship right now? I'm just being nosy, I've missed your video so much. Uh, am I in a relationship right now? No, I'm not. No new girlfriend, no new boyfriend. Just enjoying my dating life, ATM. Inspire Be Inspired says, which exercise do you enjoy the most? Which one have you seen the best results from? At the moment, that's swimming. I've seen massive results in my strength, in my fitness, in my shape. Yada yada yoop yoop says, I know weight loss isn't your immediate focus, but would you ever consider arranging another diet bet? Never. Diet bet for me is actually quite a sore subject because now I can see how disordered that mentality is and I feel incredibly upset that I was ever a part of it. Donna.m says, if you see old photos of yourself and you feel yourself comparing, how do you stop that and feel good in your current body? I think we all need to realise that it's we all look back and think, oh, I looked so great. And oh, why didn't I realize? And why did I think I was so fat? And why didn't I, and all this stuff. And looking back and feeling bad about our bodies shows that it's never been our bodies that have been the problem. It's always been the issue that we have with our, uh, the relationship we have with our bodies that's in our heads. And when you work on that in your head, the relationship with your body will get better. I think my camera's gonna die. So I'm gonna say, oh, I thought it died then. I'm gonna say adios, good night, buenas noches from London. Uh, thank you so much for watching. This has been a long one, I think, but um, I hope you've enjoyed it. <laughs> You're the wizard of your own life. I don't even like that anymore. We need a new catchphrase for 2020. If anyone has one, please comment below. Love you all. Thank you for joining me. Let's go and smash this year. Everyone write below something they want to accomplish in this next coming month so february um and if you would like to support me on coffee you can buy me a coffee down below the link is there i'm talking too fast and i'm out of breath uh <laughs> that's it love you so much thank you for being here as always mwah, 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 mwah. bye